Man, have we been excited about this. Windows containers. Well, at least I've been excited about it. And you know what? I'm hoping that a few of you will, at the very least, have a passing interest in this. Now then, this is early stuff, right? I am pushing the boat out here for you, because we're not even GA yet. I'm actually rolling here with Windows Server 2016 Tech Preview 5 inside of Azure. So yeah, I'm obviously keeping this old boy or girl close at all times. We are living at large on the bleeding edge. But remember, as and when this stuff goes general availability, I'm going to update the content ASAP. And if it happens without me noticing, pipe up and let me know, and I'll pull out all the stops to get the section updated as fast as I can. But here's the plan. I'm going with a full fat Windows server here, GUI and all. I'm old fashioned, right? And I'm going with a version that does not have the containers feature already installed. I'm thinking showing you how to install the containers feature, if nothing else, will reinforce in your mind that it's needed. Now what we're going to be looking at here, okay, is native Windows server containers, not Hyper-V containers. They're a different variation and I've de-scoped them from this project. So we'll install the containers feature, then we'll install Docker, and then because images are a little bit different in the Windows world, I'm actually going to show you how to pull a base OS image and then run your first container. So, you came here expecting to learn how to install Docker on Windows, and you're going to walk away with the knowledge of how to run your first container as well. That's what I call a deal. So, this is our Windows server, and PowerShell's the future, so we'll go ahead and use that. Well, first things first, we need to install the containers feature. Okay, that's doing its thing. Alright, looks like we need a restart. Anyone cracking jokes about Windows needing reboots gets sent to the back of the class. And you don't want that. Oh no. Okay, here we are, server back up and running. Now to install Docker. Well, first up, I'm going to come and manually create a folder called Docker on the local machine here in the C Program Files folder. Alright, now I need to grab the daemon and client binaries from these two links here. So I'll grab the daemon first. If you look closely, they're both exactly the same, except the daemon's got D on the end and the client doesn't. So I'll have the client now. Right, let's go and find them. I'll have both of these, thanks. And I'll copy them over here in the folder we just created. Yes, thanks. Yes, thanks. It's a bit manual, yeah? Though I'm sure it'll change when it goes GA. Ping me when it does, yeah? Okay, so next up, we stick that Docker folder that we just created in our systems path. And I know I'm an old school Windows admin from many moons ago, so I'm doing it the old point and click way. It's nostalgic, right? Let me come back here and grab the path. Right, okay. Don't need any of these anymore. Nope, none of these. Okay, let's get back to PowerShell. Now, if you've already got your PowerShell window open, you're probably going to want to close it and reopen it just to pick up that new path. But next job is to register Docker D here as a service. This is the daemon or server, yeah? Okay, no news is usually good news. Let's see if it'll start. Good, but always good to double check, I think. Bingo. And I think that's us in business. This machine should now be primed and ready to rock it with Docker. So first up, probably my most frequently used Docker command. Mm, maybe not actually, but I use it a lot anyway. Docker version. Right on. Client and server both responding. And look, both running natively on the Windows kernel. Let's docker info. Lovely. It is a beautiful thing. Now, for a bit of necessary Windowsy stuff. Before you can start running containers on Windows, you need to download what's currently being called a base OS image. And to do that, we need the container image package provider here. Give that a second or two. Right, now we can run find container image. 
There they are, okay? Our two options for base OS images, nano server and server core. So let's grab the server core one. Oh, yeah, okay. It's like nine gigs or something, so it's gonna take a while. But yeah, look here, there's Microsoft doing the same as me. <coughs> this stuff is in mega flux, yeah? Bleeding edge and all, remember? Now then, while that downloads, okay? The reason that we've got to do what we're doing here with Windows base OS images, I think, is pretty much down to licensing and legal stuff. I don't think these can just be hosted on Docker Hub and the likes. Now, I'm hopeful that that'll change soon. It might be wishful thinking on my behalf, I don't know. But I know that, like, way back in late 2015 at DockerCon in Barcelona, that was the reason cited as to why we're doing what we're doing here. Anyway, now that that's downloaded, we need to restart Docker. Okay, if we throw docker images, right, there it is, server core. The thing is, though, in order to use it more easily, it is a really good idea to tag it as the latest image. Now, okay, this is like, <laughs> this lesson's mushrooming out of control here. So, when you use docker commands that reference images, unless you explicitly tell the command which image version or tag you want to go with, like, say, version 1 or version 0 0.5 or whatever, or even this hideous long version or tag here, if you don't specify that and you just omit it, then the docker daemon is going to assume that you mean the image that is tagged as latest. Only, look here, there's none tagged as latest, just 10.0.143, whatever. So, let's tag that image as latest, and hopefully if it's not clear, you'll see what I mean in a second. So we go docker tag, we throw the image ID here, and we'll tag it as Windows Server Core, and then Latest. Right, Docker Images again. Okay, see how it looks? Mm, you know what, that looks rubbish actually. Let's make this a little bit wider, and over here as well. Oh, yeah, miles better. Right, see how it looks like there's two images now? Only, there's actually not. Because if you look closely, you'll see they've both got the same image ID, and they're both the same size. But... There's two tags against it, and an image can have pretty much as many tags as you want. They're just helpful metadata at the end of the day. Anyway, now that we've got our image and we've tagged it as latest, let's run a container. So we go docker run. This is telling docker to go run as a new container. The int flags here make it an interactive one. Basically attach my PowerShell terminal here to the standard in stream of the container, though. You know what, saying that. To be honest, I've absolutely no idea whether Windows uses terminology like standard in and streams and the likes. But you know what? We're attaching my PowerShell terminal here to the terminal that we're going to create inside the container. Speaking of which, we better base it off that server core image we downloaded. And we'll just run a CMD shell process inside of it. Now then, if we hadn't just tagged our image as latest in the previous step, right? We'd now have to go and stick that hideous long 10 dot whatever tag on the end here. But, because we did tag it as latest, we can just omit the tag and it'll default to using the image with the latest tag. Crystal clear? I hope so. If it's not, you know what, rewind and watch it again maybe. And if all else fails, watch my docker deep dive course. But, before I hit return, okay, notice my prompt here. In fact, actually, let's do this first. Okay, so this machine's called Docker Win, and that's Docker for Windows, right? It's not Docker for the Win. <laughs> Just thought I'd better make that clear. Well, let's have that Docker Run command again. And there we go. Okay, we've lost the funky blue of PowerShell, and notice that the prompt has changed. All because we're inside of the container now. So if we host name again, there we go totally different environment. This shell that we're in now is that CMD process that we just started inside of our new container. So if I control P and Q out of this to exit the container but leave it running, and I do a docker PS here to see running containers, I see we didn't get our nice PowerShell blue black, but there it is running. And that, ladies, gents, and sysadmins, is how to install Docker on Windows and Thrown in as a bonus, it's how to run your first container. Oh yes, the world is now your oyster.